Welcome back to Create Craft Costume, where this is Cheryl, our fabric wizard. And Ashley, my apprentice. We've got a bit of the Irish <laughs> blarney going on here today. Today we be leprechauns. We be leprechauns. <laughs> but not only will this project be super fun for St. Patrick's Day. You will get to practice sewing curves. Ashley does not like to sew curves. It, there's a knack to it and a trick there is. to it. It's, it. There's a finesse about it that I still haven't picked up. But this this project is great for practicing. And you get to be a leprechaun with us when you're done. So, so let's, let's get, get sewing. sewing. Now, just like with our bag tutorial, we came up with a chart of measurements for you. But this one has three different charts. And the reason is, is because we're cutting three separate pieces. The first measurement we're going to start with is for the body and that's the middle portion of this hat from the brim to the top and this is actually one long rectangular square. We base these measurements off of four standard head sizes which you measure just from going from the middle of your forehead taking the measuring tape and wrapping it around until it matches. Now for this pattern we did a standard 10 inches tall if you want it to be exactly, you'll need to adjust for that seam allowance. So by the time it's finished, it's slightly under 10 inches and you can adjust that if you want. The next part we're gonna have you cut is the top of the hat. And this ends up being a circle, even though we're cutting a square first, but you need to understand what the term radius is. And that is half of the circle. That's how you're going to measure the square that you end up cutting, as we will show you in the rest of the tutorial. Also notice that the previous two, you're only cutting one. The brim, we're actually cutting two. We also have two radiuses because you will have a smaller circle and a larger circle, which we will show you how to do. Just make sure that you're cutting the total square for the head size of your choice. Now let's begin. The Fabric Wizard chose to do a 24 inch size hat, so we will be using those measurements from our chart. And since the brim requires two pieces instead of one, and it is also the largest square that we need to cut, we're gonna cut those two pieces first to maximize the yard of felt that we purchased. So here you see us, we are simply measuring 17 inches up and 17 inches across to get our two pieces. The order that you cut these doesn't matter, but here you see us cutting the body, again, for the 24 inch hat size, and that is 10 by 25 inches. And remember this one, you don't need two, you only need one. The other good news about using felt for this project is it's actually wider than your standard cotton. So we made both of these hats from one yard of this felt. The last piece we have to cut out is one nine by nine inch square for the top of our hat. And now we get into the really fun part of measuring the circles that we now need to cut out of the squares. We're gonna start with the smaller nine inch square first. And first we need to fold it into quarters. Make sure you pay particular attention to where all of the corners meet. That is the middle of your hat. So if you see any outside edges, that's not where you're measuring from. Otherwise you won't have a full circle. Then this is where that radius comes in. For the 24 inch hat, you need a four inch radius, which means we're taking this tool, we're marking it in the middle of the hat at four inches, and then we are just connecting the dots and making a curve across this square, as you will see when we finally cut this out. I want to emphasize here, this is not a diagonal. Don't measure straight. This is a four inch curve. So make sure to mark four inches every place. And here's a tip on cutting. Don't cut these all out at the same time. Learn from my mistakes. As you'll see here, Fabric Wizard made a clip and then she cut out two layers separately, which makes the curve so much easier to work with. So this is our wizard wisdom tip for this video. And then here is the top of your hat. Dun, 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 dun. dun. Now we are on to the larger 17 inch square that requires two radius measurements. And if you don't want to math, remember the seam allowance and all of those are included in our charts at the beginning. We're making the 24 inch hat size. So this 17 inch square 
needs to have an outer radius of eight inches. Here you see her marking with the standard tape measure that has a metal piece at the top first. And then she switches to her favorite that she can put a pin in and pivot across the fabric. So there are several ways that you can measure these. Our inner radius is only three and a half. So you get that nice three inch brim and the seam allowance is built in. Word of advice again, don't cut all four layers at a time. You will regret it. And I paid for it in the sewing later. And don't forget this one requires two pieces cut. So you can either do all that measuring again, or you can use that one as a template. But um, if you miscut the first one, pro tip, your second one's gonna be just as janky. So make sure that you are cutting out your circles correctly if you're gonna use this as a template. Now we're ready to sew. All right, now you've got the two pieces lined up one on top of each other. You're going to pin the outside edges together. My suggestion is pin them inside the seam allowance so you can leave the pins there as you sew around it. Now, on mine, you can see that I only put in four, in, four pins and too close to the edge, quite frankly. When Ashley comes along, I said, no, put them in the middle because the fabric shifts because you're turning it not just sewing straight. So put it inside and then leave the pins in as you sew around, you will get a better curve. This pinning trick on curves does not just apply to the brim of this hat. It applies to any curve, whether it's on a collar or a pocket or a sleeve. It S is- Sleeves especially. Ashley. <laughs> It is unnatural to want to turn the fabric as it's going through the machine. You're taught to sew straight. You are not sewing straight. You are sewing in a curve. So use this tip. Yes. It's not just unnatural, it's uncomfortable. You don't know how the fabric's gonna shift. You don't know how it's gonna change, which is why I do so much more pinning than she does because I had never sewn on felt before. But this tip can be a lifesaver between calling sleeves the devil's mistress and actually learning how to do them. Exactly. Before you start, lengthen your stitch. I went from a 2.5 to a 3.5. It'll make getting around that curve easier. And so all the way around, do not leave an opening because we do not need that to turn. Then before you leave the machine, clip those curves about every inch all the way around because it's quite a serious turn. All right, now we are going to turn that so the seam is on the inside and it looks a little wonky. Don't worry about it. When we go over to the iron, I will show you how to smooth that right on out. You'll have a beautiful brim. As long as you sewed it correctly. We'll get to mine later. <laughs> okay, about ironing felt. You want to make sure you keep your iron on the wool setting. You can use lots of steam. You can use water. That's what I have in the spray bottle to help set that crease. If you have seen any of our other tutorials, you will see I use this rolling technique, something I learned in England, where you roll the, the seam back so that seam is right along the edge. Again, using water and using steam will help set that in. Do that all the way around. And then it looks less bumpy. <laughs> It looks beautiful. It does. No, hers does. It is. You can <laughs> top stitch around this edge if you want. And if you're making other hats, several rows of top stitching also look, gives a unique look to the brim. This is a costume hat, so we are not going to do that. But if you were going to top stitch, you would do it now. And now we're moving on to the body. Yes, we are. So now it's time to embellish. And you need to do this before you put the hat together. You wanna to do it while it's flat. So what we're doing here is we're laying out the pattern for the band for the brim. We're using the Dollar Tree ribbon left over from Halloween, and then a piece of wide grow grain ribbon to finish out the hat band. We are also using this gem ribbon. I don't know if that's what it's really called, but that's what we're calling it. Again, from the Dollar Tree. And you can al align that buckle any way you wish it to be. But do not sew on the buckle before you attach the band to the hat. One other thing, you're going to want to make a tuck in your ribbon so you have a place for the clasp for the buckle. So we're making it look like a faux buckle, yeah, which I think are. is fun. We are, because we are fancy leprechauns around here. Okay, so get that in place and then sew the ribbon down first. 
Okay, before you start to sew down this ribbon embellishment, change your stitch back to your normal stitch size for your machine if you haven't done that. Make sure that the tuck on your ribbon is pinned down so that will stay in place as you sew. And then start at one end, sew to the other end of your hat, go back to the start and sew down the other side. So you're making sure you sew the same direction on the ribbon, both sides. And that will also help make sure your buckle stays straight because it will shift if you don't do that or you have a greater potential for it shifting. It will. Okay, it's time to do that buckle. I still have a love-hate relationship with the hot glue gun, so Ashley's taking over from here. It's all yours. I would not personally choose to sew this on, but I would glue it before you sew the two sides together. So again, make sure you glue this while it's flat and you are 100% going to need some type of finger or silicone protectors. See all those holes in that jewel? That will be your finger if you touch it without the protectors. So uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I try and use as little hot glue as possible to bring the aesthetic appearance up and I just glued in all four corners and then we're ready to sew the sides. Once you are satisfied with your embellishments, it's time to start putting this hat together. So the first thing I would do is make sure that ribbon matches. Put it right sides together and you are going to sew that center back seam on your hat. It is far more important that the ribbon matches than the top and the bottom of the hat. Why, you ask? Because this band is supposed to look like it's continuous around the hat. If it doesn't match in the back, it's going to look ugly. And the top and the bottom can be trimmed off just a little bit. It might be off and not affect the way that the brim and the top of the hat will fit into it. And I realized we didn't show us marking the ribbon because apparently that's the only thing I did right on this tutorial is I can lay a ribbon out straight. But if you <laughs> need to, mark it before you sew it and you'll make sure that your ribbon's straight across. Exactly. If any of you are feeling anxious about putting all these circles together, let me give you three things that's going to make it doable for you. The first is to clip. The second one is to quarter. And the third one is to pin. The clipping allows that straight edge of the body of the hat to become circular to fit the top. As you can see here, it does allow it to open up and bend. So you're going to clip all the way around, about every inch, all the way around the hat. Okay, now for the quartering part. The goal here is to have four marks on each piece that we can match up to align this so it fits in beautifully with the easing. For the top of the hat, this hat top measures eight inches. So whatever your top hat measures, do it, mark it at the half of the height and the half of the width. As you can see, this is, I'm marking it the four inches on the left and the right, and the four inches at the top and the bottom. That gives you the four quarters. And we showed it this way so that you can see the four, but you can also just fold it in half like I did, because I cheated. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, now on the body of the hat, it's similar. We are going to fold that into the force. We're starting with the seam. That's our one mark. And then directly across from the seam, that's our second mark. And then we're going to match up the second mark with the seam and mark those two edges. There's our third and our fourth marks. So now both the body and the hat have the fourth marks. We're going to match up those marks right now. Since the purpose of those four marks is to help easing the round hat top into the straight body, you're going to match up a mark from the body to a mark on the hat all the way around the hat. So you're going to have that pinned in in four places. It's important that you place the pins on the body side, not the top hat side, as I'm showing here, because you need to make sure that the clips that you've made will be enclosed in your seam. So after you've placed those four marks, just hold it up like I did so you can see that it's round, and then you're going to work on easing the rest of those in. So now you're going to start easing the straight part of the body up against the curve of the hat. The reason I say up, because you are going to pull the body of the hat 
up to match the curve of the top. You will see that that allows that body to open up and become a circle to sew around. So it's very important that the edge of the hat and the edge of the body match or you won't get a circle at the top. It's also important, let your clips work for you. They shouldn't be close together. They should be spread out because you need that curve. So if it's too flat in one area, AKA what I did, uh, you, you won't get that pretty circle that hers has. Yes, so you want this to look that you've got little V's all the way around the body of the hat up against the curve of the top of the hat. That's the goal. And I know she makes this look easy, but I wanna emphasize this is not a fast or simple skill. She took over three minutes to ease this in, and that's why I'm showing you this in real time. When she's moving pins and changing pins, she's looking specifically for how that V is looking on the hat. So this is such a low risk project to learn this skill because it just takes practice, practice, and more practice, and maybe watch this video a few times. Okay, make sure the top of your hat is down flat against the sewing machine. The body is what is sticking up in the air. Now, you want to do it this way because the top of the hat is flat. The body, you want to make sure that you're covering the clips and the folds are up into the body of the hat. All right, as I was taught, this is a sew, stop, adjust, sew process all the way around the top of the hat. By that I mean you are going to focus on the part of the hat that is around the presser foot. You are not going to worry about the rest of the, the hat. So you're going to sew it for a ways and then you are going to adjust. And as you can see here, you are adjusting the top part of that hat, pulling that fullness around and making sure the top circle is going right under your presser foot and the curve is coming up to the edge. And you are going to maneuver the top of the hat as you sew around that so you're not getting any puckers and these clips are enclosed. Fair warning, your first attempt, you will probably get a pucker. Not a big deal, you're learning. If you look at the part that's been sewn, the two things that are critical in eliminating possible puckers is that the two edges are close together and that the clips are enclosed but close to the stitching. So when you've finished and you're looking at your hat, if it is not as round as you would like it to be, consider this. Did you cut it correctly? Did you measure it correctly? And if those are correct, then one of these two things is incorrect. By those two things, she means the edges are not perfectly even or your stitching is not near your clips, as you will see on mine. Don't worry, we'll go through it. Okay, now we are going to do the last thing and attach that brim. It is much simpler than doing the top of the hat, but the process is much the same. First, you are going to mark the quarters on the brim, just like you did the top of the hat, and mark the hat in quarters as well. The only difference is this time you are going to clip the brim of the hat, not the body of the hat, because you are trying to make the brim straight. So we are going to match up the four marks on the brim to the four marks on the body of the hat. We are going to pin on the brim side. Same principle applies. We want to make sure we can see those clips. They can work to our advantage to make sure we line up those edges. So the curved edge of the brim goes along the straight edge of the hat. You're going to ease that in between those four marks. A few more thoughts about easing. Imagine, if you will, your stitching line. Envision that as you look at what you're pinning. Above that stitching line, the edges should be lined up. The, the clips should be open into small Vs. That's above the stitching line. Below your imaginary stitching line should be where the folds or the gathers or the tucks in what you're easing will be but along that stitching line should lay flat. And if it does not, 
you may need to add another clip or two like I'm doing here. When I was easing that in, it was too tight. Too tight equals puckers. So I need to release that brim by giving it another clip or two so I can open it up so my stitching line will be flat. And I want to emphasize that sh I'm showing you this in real time. This is not something she speeds through. This is a finesse and the more time you spend on this and imagining that stitching line, making sure your edges are even, the better your hat will turn out. With the caveat, uh, do cut this correctly because of course that's where all my mistakes started, which you'll see later. Now, this is why sewing on the brim is easier. So much easier. So much easier. You take could take advantage of the opening in the hat and slip that hat right around the open arm on your machine. So now you have a circle to sew around. So now you're going to sew around that circle. Remember you have another layer down here so you're going to make sure all those layers stay lined up as you sew around. You're going to stop a little bit as you pull that circle around the arm but it will be a little smoother sewing than it was around the top of the hat. Just make sure the edges are lined up and those clips are all enclosed in your seam. When you reach around to the end, back stitch and then leave it right there and then do a narrow zigzag right above that stitching because you're going to trim it down so it will sit flatter around your head when you wear the hat. And feel much more comfortable. Yes. Alrighty, now your sewing is done. Let's trim that last seam. And to make sure that you don't trim the brim, or snip the hat, my suggestion is laid against the cutting board and then you can just trim that seam close to the zigzagging but not trim any of the hat. And then you are done. Hat complete. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And good luck sewing on curves. You got it. And now it's the apprentice's turn. I didn't have an issue cutting the squares, but what I found is that just forcing through four layers of felt when it turns out you don't know how to use the scissors correctly was not the best way to go. As you can see, I'm already starting with more of a squarish shape on the top than a circle, and this will affect me for the rest of the project, so make sure you cut out layer by layer. And unfortunately, I didn't learn the errors of my ways until the end of this project. So of course I cut out the large 17 inch brim piece the exact same way. And we'll actually have a short and a video on what I did wrong with those scissors, but that didn't help me now. So just make sure that you are paying attention to cutting out as close to a circle as you can so that you can line up your edges later when you're easing. And you may be thinking, hey, that outer rim doesn't look too bad. And honestly, so am I. Where the main issue came was that inner radius. See how it looks almost more like an oval. It's just flat in some places, which means when I turned around and used this as a template for my second piece, it didn't go well. As you will see when I turn these inside out, mine looks very different than the Fabric Wizards. And here's actually the biggest cutting tip that I didn't notice until watching this playback. I still quartered mine. I didn't trace it flat like the Fabric Wizard did. I would take that back in a heartbeat. Make sure to lay both of your pieces as flat as possible and cut them out as individual because you'll have a much easier time matching sides and getting it to look like a circle. It's totally okay if you laugh at how uneven my sides are because this is where all my sewing issues stemmed from. At this point, I would make them as even as possible because you will have a much better experience, but this is why if you cut it out correctly, it will be a much easier project to begin with. As you can see, we try and flip it and make it match as best as you can, but when you cut out the second one so differently, it's going to be really hard to work with that. So just cut out your circle flat. And the good news is my project still turned out, so I'd rather learn this here than with really expensive fabric. And I actually think I followed the edge of this fairly well, but the problem is the edge isn't a circle. So you can really see in my clipping where the edges are uneven, so I kind of didn't know where to follow. Something that we might also recommend is actually marking your curve line so that you have an easier time. But 
no amount of ironing is going to get this to a circle. I'm just telling you right now, your stitches are what you're stuck with. Move on and try again later. And this next learning moment is brought to you by someone who thought, sewing on a ribbon is really easy, right? Nope, turns out there's some tricks to this too. I want it to be stated before I explain. She used grow grain, which doesn't shift like satin does. So as long as you line it up straight, I thought this will be no problem. But can you see here, I started to get this large pucker going down the ribbon. And especially on satin, which reflects the light, this would be highly visible on the finished product. However, did I even realize that this type of um, shifting or puckering was something that you could even fix? No, no, I did not. So it turns out that I started wrong. It was shifting right from the beginning because I didn't pin it enough, which turned out to be okay because I'm so nervous about putting this hat together that I didn't even mark the spot for the buckle and I would have had to redo it anyway. And on my way to the sewing machine, Fabric Wizard had more tips. Notice how I also put pins, so don't skip that part. <clears throat> Me again. Did I pin? Yes. Did I pin it correctly? No. So to help, to help with the shifting and she didn't remember, she didn't do this. Okay. So this is if you're using satin ribbon, which of course I am, um, to help with the plotness and making sure that this lies flat and doesn't shift. We're going to put two pins at the top as, as close as we can, because again, if, if it goes on like this, if it goes on like this, it'll be really nice and flat. And then um, don't pin it just in the middle here because the edges will still shift. So I'm going to add some more pins on the edges and then I'm going to get this on there. Okay, so see, I am also adjusting the buckle area because this is satin on satin, which means that's already moved and I haven't even sewed it yet. And after taking the proper pinning precautions, the first line goes down really easy. The second line also went down flat as glass. I'm really impressed with the finish on this, and I know it sounds like it was a lot of effort, but the finish also looks great. I'm really glad I learned this. Also, don't forget that you can touch your fabric. Make sure to hold it at the top and bottom for that tautness, but this detail is just chef's kiss. Mwah. Now, after adding the embellishing, sewing, quartering, clipping, and my attempt at easing, I did get the hat top on, but guys... I ended up with puckers. There's no way about it. You can definitely see a difference. But that's why I had the Fabric Wizard explain so much on how to try and fix that later. So instead of unpicking it, I just want to try making one of these again. This is what makes this a really good project for curves. So if you do not ease correctly, you will get puckers. You can see if you're going around here, this this needs more in here. This is way too flat and I'm feeling it. This needs to, if we unpicked from here to here, we would get that and it wouldn't, it wouldn't be puckered. But you can see that is just, that is too flat there. But you can see over here, we've got some fullness coming around here. You can see how you've got that fullness in there. That looks like a pucker, but it's not because you've got that fullness in there. But one little spot, there's another one. See, there's another one. That is a little too flat. So half of this is perfect. The other half is a little too flat. And if we undid this, you could make sure that there wouldn't be any puckers. It's up to you. It's the top of a hat. And look, when you get your hat up there, I don't know if it's worth it. You can decide. I am not saying don't value your projects. I'm saying I already unpicked the ribbon and I'm not unpicking that one. Okay. And I would probably do the same thing. But you can see how very flat that is. And Felt gives got... a little more play than say your other fabrics that you're working with would. But this, this, but just looking at it, you can see you've got the ease there, it's flat there, it's flat there, and then you've got the puckers right there. 
And this is just me showing you where I found the problems on my seams after she explained what they should look like. You can see that a lot of the edges don't match up and in those flat areas she described, I don't have that pretty V shape. So pay attention to those tips and yours should turn out better the first time. Because you have to ease the brim on next anyway, you will automatically get two chances at practicing this skill with this project. Now this is where I learned the evenness of the clips is important. Because some of my surfaces were shorter than others, that meant my clips didn't give as much as others. So again, going back to that cutting will just make this process easier. But if you have to adjust the sides or adjust the size of this, just make sure all of your clips are inside your seam so that you don't have any structural or pulling out issues later. Again, this did turn out, but there is a very clear difference between mine and the professionals. And that is how you get your very own leprechaun hat while learning some new sewing skills. It is. Back in the day, my daughter said, hey mom, can you make leprechaun hats for my kids and their friends? We want to have a St. Patrick's Day party. So I said, sure. Ran and got some green felt. This is what it ended up as looking like. And it's a fun project to make a hat that can be turned into a variety of other hats for other occasions. But Who sees Abe Lincoln in the future? Or Cat in the Hat. Cat in the Hat. But the thing that you will gain more than a fabulous hat is practice at sewing curves. A straight and line easing. is one thing, a curve is another thing. You've got all of this and this will be great skills for down the road. So have some fun, make a hat for somebody fun, make a hat for you. Don't we look adorable? This will definitely be showing up in my classroom. <laughs> Hello, students, if you're getting a sneak peek. <laughs> and if you want nothing to do with curves right now because you had as hard of a time as I did, we recommend checking out our Bow Cozy tutorial because it is all straight lines, very easy to do, and you'll turn up with something very functional for your household. So we hope to see you in our next tutorial. And please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Take care out there. Okay, so now for the embellishment. I had this little bit of Dollar Tree tour, you know what I'm talking about, ribbon it's left over from ribbon, Halloween. Ooh. And I thought, so we're trying to make this, that we can sew this flat thing around this circular thing. Shouldn't that be on that side? Well, it certainly should. Okay. It's important. Now she's got to find a foot because my <laughs> legs are longer than hers.